In this video, I'll show you how I made a replica Joby electric VTOL aircraft, a vehicle which is actively being developed to transport passengers to and from regional locations, meaning in the near-term future, you could step out of your apartment in the heart of a city and travel to a nearby airport or other location. At 1 30th the scale, this little guy has six 4-inch diameter rotors and servos to actively rotate the motors in flight to transition from hover to forward flight. In fact, I think this may be the smallest six-rotor tilt-rotor vehicle in the world. Alright, so how did I build this thing? Well, without CAD of the actual vehicle, the next best thing I have is Google Images. So I did a quick search, stole some images from the web, pasted them into my online CAD software Onshape, and got to work reverse engineering the design. I tried to keep the dimensions of everything as consistent as possible to the real thing, while still being able to produce and use it at such a tiny scale. The fuselage and wing sections are split up in half to make it easier to print, and they're hollow throughout with a thickness that is equivalent to two layer passes with a 3D printer to ensure structural rigidity and a quality print. I then designed the servo mounts for the tilt rotor mechanism, with gears which I would print on an SLA style 3D printer for higher quality parts. I then printed all the fuselage and wing sections using my carbon fiber infused modified FDM 3D printer. This is the first fuselage piece that came out. And it looks pretty nice. I printed the gears on this much more gooey SLA printer, which gave me super high accuracy prints for the gears to mesh nicely. I tested the servo mechanism using a servo tester on all three of the different tilt rotor mounts and got to work putting all of the electronics inside of the vehicle. This is powering up all six servos and all six motors at the same time for the first time. All right, let's see what happens. Will there be smoke? Okay, so I've just made a bit of a mistake. I thought that the five volt on the ESC seat here, I thought that five volt right there, plus five volt on the ESC, meant that it was a external power source for five volts. Turns out, no, it's not. It's an input for five volts. So I just picked up a 12 volt to five volt converter, which I'm gonna use to uh, convert the battery 12 volts to 5 volts and then I'll be able to power the Teensy and the IMU. Three, two, one. Yay, we have power. I'm using a Teensy Arduino flight controller with an external IMU for controlling the vehicle. The code is Dreamflight VTOL and is available online with easy to understand documentation and can be used across any sort of wacky RC vehicle. And because it's all based in Arduino, making modifications and understanding how the code works is easy, especially because there are tutorial videos included to help with setup. Alright, putting everything inside of the vehicle was somewhat tedious and difficult to get everything to fit while still making it accessible. But once I had everything in it and cleaned it all up, I realized the thing would look a lot better with a paint job. So I quickly spray painted it and got to work modifying the code and tuning the gains while it dried. The vehicle weighs only 320 grams, which is only about 70 grams more than a similarly sized quadcopter. The motors are 3800 Zing 2 using digital gear servos powered by a 3S850 mAh battery. To control the vehicle and hover, I'm using the inner four motors as though they are a standard quadcopter with differential RPM. The outer two motors pivot to provide additional thrust and yaw control. As the vehicle transitions to forward flight, the body axis of the vehicle stays the same, but the control inputs have to change. Now the pitch axis is controlled by the front and aft servos. And the roll axis is controlled by servo till on the left and right side wings. For yaw, the vehicle simply uses a differential RPM. When the vehicle transitions between the two flight modes of hover and forward flight, the vehicle simply interpolates between the two control methods with two sets of PID gains. And with that, the vehicle is finally ready for its maiden outdoor test flight. So I grabbed my friends Shashank and Fred and we were off.
So that's all the flight footage I'm going to show for now. I need to spend a bit more time in forward flight tuning the gains, and I think I'm going to put an FPV camera on it so that I can fly it a bit easier. Just because the thing is so small that flying it visual line of sight from a distance, it's, it's very difficult to see it and get a good orientation view of it. So I'm going to do those two things, and then I'm going to probably make maybe a second video if there's interest and upload that in the near future, so stay tuned. But some final thoughts. What is the purpose of making such a small vehicle beyond it just being super cool? Well, for a company like Joby, which is seeking to certify a much larger version, obviously, iterating different design concepts on a small scale at an early stage is a much easier and cost-effective way of testing different design concepts at an early stage before you scale up. So at a small scale, you can gain some insight into different concepts like aerodynamic performance and control methodology because this vehicle with all of its actuators has lots of different ways of controlling it and so you can investigate those things early on at a small scale. And lastly, it's a great way to simply prove whether the vehicle concept will fly at all and to get a kind of some understanding, some basic understanding as to how it will work in the end. But ultimately, I think the eVTOL space is super cool, and I can't wait to see passengers and cargo being delivered in a clean, environmental way to places that need it. So, with that, thanks for watching, and goodbye.